so during the break, we actually had uh, quite a few builds happen here. If we look at the history. So in the last 22 minutes, we had five builds complete through here. And again, we didn't do any unit tests, nothing major on it, but we did complete five builds. And if we look at our releases, we actually have uh, five releases that also made it up to um, our pseudo production. Now, from that perspective, that means we had five pull requests, five forks, five commits, five code changes, and within the time that we all went to the restroom and were done, we were able to just continually push it out there. Nobody had to package anything up, deploy things on servers. It was all handled behind the scenes. Yeah, so whenever I made a change to my development branch on my, any commit on my, um, triggers a build. And any successful build triggers a release. Yeah, so, so the most common thing that I see on here is to, in, in integration environment, so to do the immediate one, right? Then in, in integration, I might actually run another set of tests, like an integration set of tests. Rather, like I'll do the build, I'll do my unit tests, I'll let it do its thing. I'll go to an integration environment where I'll probably run my Selenium test and I'll run some integration tests, automated UI tests, pass all of those. If and only if those pass, I'll promote it to a QA environment where a QA environment would now run their manual test, do exploratory testing, do anything that they would need, uh, need to on there. Once the QA manager has approved it, the QA manager would actually be the one responsible for pushing the button for going to the next environment. That might be staging if I'm doing AB uh, deployments, or that might be production. Right, that, that's a very common scenario where, where I've seen that. Um, so what does this look like? We actually, this is the actual website that we were working on. Uh, this is the part that I worked on for you guys where, if you guys want to go to this URL, it's super long, I'm sorry. It really, uh, yeah. So in here you could, I did a little uh, uh, survey for what your favorite services in Azure and I picked some of the ones that I actually used to build this and some other ones that are comparable with it. You can click them and you can see that as you click them, you're gonna have uh, things on the side that are gonna update. And if you notice this is actually asynchronous, we'll talk about the architecture in a minute. But as I click them and it refreshes, it's not immediate that it puts it on there. And that's actually, I'm using queue services on the back end to process the votes as they come in. So that way, if the service gets slammed, I'm not going to <coughs> kill the database with trying to manage all the rights while people are trying to read and see the poll results. So we'll, we'll talk about the architecture in this next part anyway. So it'll be kind of cool. Then we've got your guys' votes down here where it looks like we got Superman, Captain America. Uh, where did your hello from Grant? All right, but we see Superman being voted for. We see Captain, we can click on these and we'll see Captain America and Spider-Man coming back eventually and they're showing up. Great, we deployed an application, cool. All right, nice and easy. We completed our mission, we got our lab out and we're gonna go back to our slide deck here. Um, now this is not the next part of the slide deck just yet because we kind of took a break early, but I did want to show you this uh, last slide. Um, the next step was actually to build, deploy it, and use it. And Dave, of course, stepped out. I put this up there because I know I didn't do any unit testing, so this is not representative of good application practices, but just remember, I don't always test my code, but when I do, I do it in production. Most interesting man alive. Quote him, love him. <laughs> 